fill out the application. <laughs> so here with me to ask a few questions uh, is Nikhil Sood, who was born and brought up in New Delhi, India, and attended St. Columbus School, which was SRK School. He then came to Yale, where he received his bachelor's in economics in 2010. Economics, just like SRK. It gets more eerie as you go. Um, while at Yale, um, uh, actually he departed uh, from Sharuk's uh, career, and he founded Yale Hindi Debate, a national level yeah. competition in the United States that takes place entirely in the Hindi language, and it's now in its fifth year. He's currently a student at the Yale Law School. We're going for a dual language country here sooner or later. While he hasn't yet charted out his career plans, uh, he did tell me that he's got one goal, to get Mr. Sharuk Khan to follow him on Twitter. <laughs> no. Not yet. He hasn't achieved this goal yet. Then we have Sarika Arya, who graduated from Yale College in 2011 with a double major in ethics, politics, and economics, and also theater studies. Her parents emigrated from India to America, where she and her brother were born and raised until they moved to London for several years. While here at Yale, Sarika studied international affairs, human rights activism, and the use of theater to impact social change. Uh, she's currently working as a Woodbridge Hall Fellow at the Yale Office of International Affairs. Next year, she's off to London School of Economics. Um, so please welcome uh, the guest. Uh, we had some questions. Everyone had their own particular question that they wanted to ask Sharuk, and we're going to start with you. Hello, Mr. Khan. Uh, I felt you spoke really, truly inspiringly about value and creativity and about facing your fears. My concern is I feel there are many students out there who are passionate about creativity and are also generally brave people who can face their fears. But in spite of this, they choose safer, more traditional, non-creative paths in life because they feel the creative path is simply too risky, no matter how brave they are. And even though they love creativity for its own sake, not for bartering it for money, they feel they still need to be able to pay the bills and that might not happen. So for a person who is devoted to the arts, but due to certain practical realities of the world, selects a non-creative path, is it possible for such a person to lead a truly happy, fulfilling life? On a personal note, I'm really worried because I'm a huge fan of creative writing. And I did a lot of that in school and at college, but now I've chosen law school. And I console myself by saying, so what if you're not writing movies or TV shows? you'll still be writing legal briefs and legal memos. <laughs> you know, while on some level that makes sense, I think it's an extremely depressing thought. <laughs> and I do feel like somebody's stepping on my oxygen tank, but I fear that the alternative might feel like somebody simply cut off my oxygen tank and I won't be able to pay my bills. So, uh, my question really is, and I ask this on behalf of everyone like me, can I be happy? And it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I think how, how I've done it, you know, I, I did theatre and I truly believe in uh, being very creative, very artistic and a very serious actor at times. Um, I really do. When I see uh, a lot of work that is being done around by other actors uh, in my own country and outside, I feel envious at times that I've not been able to do that. Uh, because like you said, when I came on to uh, Mumbai, and I would say this to all the kids, that yes, uh, surviving is the most, that's what the whole speech was, that you have to, I'll teach you how to survive. Yeah, I'm not going to give you uh, any thoughts about uh, that, listen, it's all right to you know, go on top of Himalayas and do your writing, creative writing, whether anyone reads it or not. No, it's important that people read it. It's important it becomes a bestseller. As a matter of fact, I very shamelessly say I am the most capitalist human being that you will ever find on the face of this earth. I truly believe that you need to find a place where you can make the choices that you want to make. You cannot just say, you know, I had a friend uh, who, was, who was a creative writer and who fortunately still is not a lawyer. And uh, <laughs> he told me to write books. And he's working here in America, New York actually, Benny. And he asked me one day, his father died, and he said, you know, I want to write books. I want to write creative stuff on spirituality and goodness. And I don't want to write anything else. How am I going to survive? My father's there, my mother's not being able to look after me. And I said, you know, you go down and uh, 
you know, start working in an advertising company where you started writing. Uh, I do remember, you know, we, this, this is a joke we had in college. I don't know if it is still here. Uh, you know, it was an innerwear ad, you know, with a, with a, with a like a Calvin Klein underwear model. You know, like, uh, it's for everyone, every Tom, Dick, and Harry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you say, if you write this stuff, you like it. And earn the money, pay your bills, don't let them cut your oxygen tube out. But after you are in that position of choice, don't misuse it. And that's the one thing that I, was, I, I decided to do. I do a lot of advertising, a lot of people question me on the uncreative bits of work that I do. I do, I think, out of uh, 10 things that I do, I think seven of them are highly uncreative. Highly uncreative. Um, and very disturbing at times. I'm a big bathroom now. I sit there and cry after having done those things. <laughs> yeah. I, I genuinely do, I'm not lying. I want, I want kids to know this, that yeah, I do that. I get, I'm like, I don't want to do this. But I take the money from that. And I would like to be able to create a, produ a production house a filmmaking institution, which would do the creative stuff which I wanted to do when I was 25. It may get a little late. It may happen when I'm 50 or 55. It may not have happened when I dreamed of it at 26, 27. But I'm sure that I would make the right choices. So please, all you kids, do not get waylaid by anyone who tells you it's wonderful to be creative and poor and hungry. No. You, you can't be that. You have to survive. You owe it to your parents. You owe it to your life. Be well, have good cars, have a good television, have three PlayStations if you need. But when you get into that position of choice, make sure you don't cheat with your choices. So that's one thing. So do your legal briefs. And uh, uh, on the side, when you have become this very famous, wonderful lawyer, saving convicts and uh, <laughs> criminals, go into that bathroom, cry a bit that you saved another criminal today. But with the money that you earn from that mafia dog, 